Hello everybody, this is Mark Kumar, your lifestyle entrepreneur and proud founder of Simple Podcast Cloud, a platform that gives the power to the podcaster to flourish like a beautiful flower because we want to make sure the podcaster have the power to share their voice with the world without any limitation. With us, we give you unlimited everything under one account. Having said all of that, if you're in the market for podcast host check us out and today i want to introduce my another amazing outstanding dear friend of mine david who is going to share with you some tips and secrets that will help you take your podcasting game to the next level so without any further ado david please take your time to introduce yourself and tell us a little bit about yourself sure hey mark well thanks for having me um i always love being on other podcasts and um, so I'm a financial planner and um, I've been um, working with individuals and business owners for going on almost two decades. And um, about a year ago, I changed firms and in the financial planning business, there's a whole lot of compliance. And when I changed firms, I had the ability to um, to start a podcast. And um, so I've always listened to podcasts and a lot of the podcast hosts that I listen to, they feel like they're your best friends and you know them and you trust them. And I really felt like if I could develop a financial planning podcast, it would just take my practice and my credibility and, and would differentiate me just to a whole new level. So I'm loving every minute of it. It's fun. It's a lot of work. There's a, a lot to learn, but, um, but yeah, it's really cool stuff. Yeah, man, I could totally relate. When I when I, before I got to the, into the pot, wonderful world of podcasting, I listened to so many different podcasters out there, like from your health, your financial, your mm -hmm. you know marketing, Facebook, and the whole nine yard. And I was like, I got so much information. And I'm like, I need to share this back. So that's where I started to started my podcast for an entrepreneur, more specifically digital entrepreneurs who want to take their business to the next level. So I'm so glad you took the plunge of becoming a podcaster as well. So tell me how has the journey been how has the journey your journey has been has it been rewarding uh, what are the things that you have learned that you didn't know about before well, you know, one of the things that it has been, especially in the beginning, is a little frustrating because it's hard. You know, I mean, which microphone do you buy? Which which program do you use? How do you record? Which who who should host for you? And and, and all of that. So everybody that that I've talked to that says, well, you know, what advice do you have when starting a podcast? The advice is your first few episodes will totally suck. <laughs> That's just what it is. But nobody will really think they're that bad other than you. Uh, but, um, you know, the uhs and the ums and the coughs. Yeah, you get to where you don't say um that much, but you still do. And you can get to where you're better at editing them out. But, um, yeah, your first few are just not going to be all that great. Uh, but, but you just got to do it. I gave myself a deadline of having a podcast episode. Um, complete by by the end of 2019. So on July 31st is when I uploaded a seven minute episode and I'll never listen to it again. <laughs> wow, was it that good? <laughs> well, what's really interesting is if you've never podcasted and I've done a little bit of recording, I've been on some radio commercials, so I've heard my voice and when I hear my voice, I cringe and, and you probably cringed when you first heard your voice. Um, and that's just how everybody hears you. So nobody thinks you have a bad voice. It's just, it doesn't sound like what you think it'll sound like. So I actually shared my podcast to a podcasting Facebook group and said, Hey, who wants to just give some critiques and somebody, and this is a person who I'll never meet. I never have met. They said, you have a wonderful speaking voice, which I would never, ever, ever think that that's what somebody would say about me. And this person wasn't just being nice just because they don't know me. They don't, they, they'll never meet me. They, they literally said that I have a good speaking voice and that's just not something that I think that I have. So go figure. Yeah, I think you hit the nail right on the head. It's like we are our own worst critic and then we want, you know, the best, the best, the best. And then in the process of getting the best, sometimes we just stop. And I totally agree with you. First time I heard my voice, I was like, oh, my God, I sound horrible. Like, I can't believe I sound like that, you know, because... Most of the time, when we're listening, we listen to other people's voices, never our own. Like, for example, if you're talking to somebody on the phone, it's your friend, your significant other, or whoever you're listening to, that's the voice that you listen to. And then your voice you never heard. And so far, I am so glad I became a podcaster because now I know what my voice sounds like. And then whatever it is work, it is 
it is what it is. And if you get over that, you know, fear, that challenge or that slum, whatever you want to call it, once you get over that, it becomes so much better, rewarding, and the number of people that you get to meet, they're mm-hmm. like, oh, wow. So tell me about, like, how many different people have you met? Or first of all, let's start with, what is your format of your podcast? Is it a solopreneur interview or what format do you follow? So I actually, I have two podcasts. I have the Weekly Wealth Podcast. And the Weekly Wealth Podcast is is a general financial planning podcast for anybody. Uh, we cover top, it, it covers the mindsets, tactics, and strategies that help y- you to build wealth. Now, the okay. wealth building principles are universal, whether you're making $50 million a year or you're making minimum wage. So we, we talk to a broad range of people and most of the shows are interviews. So for instance, I interviewed uh, Dr. Jen Price, who does, um, she has a company that helps uh, families plan for college and get scholarships. So obviously that's a huge, huge financial planning topic, right? If you had a teenager uh, and she just talked about the financial planning, uh, the, the, um, the, the scholarship process. And of course, we gave her her information where you can buy her course and get that information. Um, I've interviewed attorneys on estate planning. So most of our episodes, we're interviewing somebody that has some valuable information, but we do give them the opportunity to plug their service or their website and, and so on and so forth. But, but what I'm doing is, let's say that one of my clients says, hey, you know what? I know this guy named Mark, and I think he might need your financial planning service. And um, I'm just making this up. I don't know if it's true, but, but he has a 15-year-old. And, and Mark's mentioned that, man, college costs a lot of money, and he wants to talk to a financial advisor about uh, saving for college. So I might email that episode that I did with Dr. Jen Price to Mark saying, hey, Mark, you know, your buddy John uh, said that you and I might be a good fit for financial planning. And oh, by the way, check out this podcast about the financial financial aid process that I did with an expert and you might enjoy it. So what that does is that puts me in kind of a, just a different light than somebody else who just wants to talk about, um, uh, you know, just get right into the money and how much do you want to invest and how much should you invest and, and everything else. And I do think that, you know, like when your LinkedIn profile says I'm a podcaster and financial planner, and if I do email, you know, my podcast to you as a prospect, I just think there's so much more credibility there. All right, man. I'm so glad you brought that up because that's like a, one of the a secret right there. I think what people can use when like when they start podcasting is like, hey, I want to increase my listenership. So if they could do what you just said, email your link of your podcast to somebody who can benefit from it, and they will become a rating family, and then you have another listener. You know, simple techniques, things like that. That's what really helps. And what I want to talk to you about, like you said something about the mindset of a financial part of it. I'm sure there was a mindset shift when you become a podcaster as well. So was there, uh, can you share about that? How did that go? Like, Yeah, so a, a, a couple things. Number one is... Everybody I talk to, I'm thinking, hey, would that person be a good podcast guest? So um, in the financial planning world, we have right. – there are life insurance reps that come talk to us about, um, you know, just different different life insurance companies. So, you know, you have one of them come on the guest and talk, uh, talk about advanced life insurance uh, tactics. Uh, again, you know, I have an attorney that's in a, a networking group with me. Hey, do you want to be on my podcast? Talk about just the basics of estate planning. Gave him some some exposure, made me look really good. So, so the big thing is I'm always looking for guests to be on the podcast. The other thing is you're looking for value just to give value. Um, I'm not selling anything other than I want to be your friend and I want to sound trustworthy. And then if you've listened to enough episodes and at one point in your life, you just feel like I need a financial planner, I should be the obvious choice because you listen to me every week. You hear my voice, you hear my cheesy sense of humor, which I'm not going to hide, you know? And I think that's a beautiful thing about you're a pretty kind of energetic guy and that's who you are. And if somebody says, Hey, this guy's too energetic for me. Well, guess what? You're not going to work out and be a good fit for them. And that's okay. And I think that podcasting and video blogging, you know, it just, it, it, it shows your personality more than the written word does because written word can be taken out of context and everything else. 
Definitely, I couldn't agree more with it. You know, like when you try to text somebody, you may have meant it right. one way, and they yeah, then they read it in a different way because of the whatever was going on in their life at that time. They're like, "What do you mean? I wasn't trying to be mean, you know, whatever." And then, especially, you know, that that I totally agree. You can definitely take of small things can miss easily get misinterpreted. Yes, and I'm so glad you brought that up. Your personality, as far as podcast goes, and you know, that's literally what people are track to like either they want to be your friends or they don't want to be your friend and then people like you know like like you said i have a high energy which i do because i'm like so excited about this every time i start this podcast thing so like people who love this kind of high energy the positive energy things in nature they'll be like yeah i want to be on your i want to listen to you and then what do you feel like far as the energy level goes would anybody listen to a podcast i'll give you an example for example i'll stay right now Hello, this is Mark Kumar, and I am a lifestyle entrepreneur. Would anybody listen to that? <laughs> yeah, you know, and I, and I, I guess there may be some like if there is a podcast about ancient literature or art. I don't know. I mean, but there there may be. Um, you know, I have an attorney friend who who wears flip flops uh, to to loan closings, and that's just him. And he says, you know what? There are some real estate agents that they don't want to recommend me just because. But I, you know what? I I can't be everything to everybody, and I wear flip flops to closing, and I'm a very competent attorney, and I just don't wear suits and ties. So you know, there may be somebody that says, hey, this Mark Kumar guy, he's just way too energetic for me, and I just I can't. And you know what? That's okay. You know, because the beautiful thing about the podcasting world is you're getting your world out to so many people that um, you know I don't know how many how many of your listeners you need to convert to customers to be worthwhile, but it's a small, small percentage. If you get a few, a 1% or whatever it is. So not everybody has to love you, you know, but, but a few do. And then however you're monetizing your actual service, I think you'll get enough of them. So, yep. Yeah, definitely. And, you know, that reminds me of like small, small group of it. it reminds me of the book that uh, our great friend Seth Gordon wrote, the purple cow, you know, or the mm -hmm. group of sure. it. And yep. then it literally talks about, you need to just, literally small 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 group of people that who you want a small group of people who love you they will do anything for you as compared to a large group they will like you but they won't listen to you so yeah. let me tell you about my my other podcast so okay. so the weekly wealth podcast is very broad it, it it applies to you it applies to multimillionaires. it applies to minimum wage it's um but now I own a property and casualty insurance agency, but I'm also a financial planner. So if you needed home and auto insurance, you know, we have we 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 have people that would handle that and do a really good job for you. And then hopefully we would also handle your retirement and everything else. So I started thinking last year, all financial planners, everybody needs a niche, right? And and most financial planners say they want to say I work with doctors because obviously, you know, doctors have some excess cash flow. <laughs> Um, um, so I started thinking my niche should be insurance agents, right? So let's say you own the Mark Kumar independent insurance agency, and let's say you had nine or 10 employees, you know, mm -hmm. you would need a retirement plan. You would need benefits. You need everything else. So I have another podcast <coughs> called, um, financially covered a okay. podcast for insurance agency owners, their money and their profits. So what I do there is about four out of every five episodes, we in, we interview somebody from the industry. So maybe a rep from an insurance software company, or maybe I've interviewed like an HR person who talks about hiring and firing. And, and then about one out of every four or five episodes, we talk about a financial planning type um, topic. So what type of retirement plan might work for your agency? And the whole idea again is that um, if enough of these agents hear me, whatever percentage of them will like me, hopefully a few anyway. And then, um, you know, when they when they need that service, I should be the obvious choice. So right. that's the theory anyway. So we'll see how it turns out. But but it's a lot of fun also. Yeah. So how do you go about finding these people to interview? Is there a system that you follow? Like they need to have A, B and C and then I can interview them or what? What's well, the um, uh, most of my guests so far have been people that I already have a relationship with. Okay. Um, so, for instance, like I said, I interviewed an attorney. You know, he's just a friend and uh, 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 an HR coach that's actually done some work for me. So, um, probably eighty percent of them have been uh, people that I already have a relationship with in some way. And then the other guests have been from. Well, guess what? Where does everybody else? Where does everything else in this world come from? Social media. So there's a Facebook group that 
for every topic in the world. And there's a Facebook group or a hundred Facebook group for top for podcast guests. So that's uh, that that's a good place to uh, to find them as well. But you also, you know, when you're interviewing someone sight unseen that you don't necessarily have a relationship with, mm-hmm. you don't you, know, you get a few that don't show up, uh, you know, for for the interview. And, uh, you know, not everybody is as competent and qualified as they would initially want to appear to be so so how do you weed out those bad apples you know like do you do a pre-interview before you podcasting or how, what's your process just curious there's no process we do an interview and most of them have turned out at least exceptional at least acceptable and there have been one or two that i've just not released just because um, and actually, in the beginning, they may have been even my fault with poor audio quality and just some technical things that I hadn't um, hadn't quite figured out yet. I did have one interview where um, the, the the content was awesome, but there was a, a beeping in the background. And this guy actually talks about podcasting. So we couldn't have a um, uh, how to start a podcast show with poor audio quality. So I emailed the file to him. He's like, yeah, I don't know what happened. I can't fix it, but let's do it again. So we did another, we recorded again and it, and it came out great. So I, you know, having, I mean, I guess there are people out there where their podcast is their main source of revenue. I mean, the John Lee Dumas of the world. And, uh, you know, this is something where, you know, definitely is a, is a few hours per week, but there's a whole lot else going on in my life as well. So probably ideally we should have a pre-interview, but, in practice, only so many hours in the day. Exactly. <laughs> you know, sometimes you just got to take people at what they say and then hope for the best, you know. And hopefully things work out. Sometimes they don't. If they don't work out, you have an experience. Now you can learn from it. Yep. I mean, uh, have you ever had an uh, interview where you are literally pulling teeth and like, give me something that I can use. And then, you know, that I could actually have some content. You know, I haven't because most people that I've interviewed they have something to sell. So they want to talk to me and they want to have, you know, their website in the show notes. And, and hopefully you would go to their website and sign up for their newsletter or sign up for their service. So most everybody I've interviewed has been an entrepreneur and it may have been the opposite. It's like, you got to get them to shut up somehow. It's like, look, this podcast <laughs> needs to end. We're, we're too long. Um, and, and, um, so yeah, but I've interviewed a couple, a couple authors, um, mm-hmm. There's a um, Tom Corley wrote a book called Rich Habits that I read a few years ago, and he basically he's a CPA and actually a financial planner, and he did a study on the habits that rich people have, and just like they were like how much time uh, rich people spend watching TV versus poor people, and how many books rich people read versus and it wasn't like a judgmental thing like you're a bad person you're poor it was just you know people over a certain amount of income read a certain amount of books per year and they they eat even a certain amount less junk food calories per per day than um, so I just reached out to him on Twitter and like hey I love your book I read it would you like to do a podcast episode and we we did a cool episode you know and and you know it it was it was it was good quality content on both sides oh my god that's an amazing yeah. amazing book can mm-hmm. you share a little bit about what did you get out of it after the podcast just out of curiosity uh, you know i mean i got to meet somebody cool who okay. is is um i mean relatively famous and uh, i don't want to say where is someone who is where I want to be, but someone who definitely has, he's a quality, quality CPA slash financial planner that does a really good work. Um, and also somebody who has some, he's done some really strong research and, and, and I learned, you know, um, you know, some of the habits that I need to develop to take my game to the next level. But what I also learned was, so I've probably spent maybe $500 on podcasting equipment, maybe not even that much. So it's not like, but, once you have a podcasting microphone and you have a logo that I went on Fiverr and I paid someone $50 and I think I paid 50 or $75 for, and I do have to say I have cool intro music. Okay. Now you're like kind of on the same level as anybody. So they don't know that you don't know what you're doing. And, um, but it's kind of that grassroots type uh, medium where you just reach out to an author and they may say yes. And then, you know, you're both fellow podcasters exactly you know you never know and i think the biggest thing is like some people who are just starting off they have may have the mindset of like i am not good enough this guy is up level 10 and i'm just starting off and i might not even get to that person like the way i look at it, like you never know 
until you ask. You might just get yes. So you have 50-50 chance. So speaking of which, uh, when somebody's starting out, right, what recommendation would you give a person who's just starting out a podcast? Like they just got in this bug of podcasting, they want to create a podcast. And then for the first 10 episodes, what recommendation would you give them in terms of equipment, software, and how to record it? Yeah, so if it, um, well, prior to talking with you, I'd have said just do a Zoom Zoom for interview. And, and again, and Zoom is free and it's a good starting, starting point. Um, now, Hindenburg is a great software um, for editing. And it's, it's, I think, $300 if you buy it or you can rent it for like $40 every three months. Hindenburg... I've, I've, I've done well with Hindenburg and I'm still learning and, and like anything else, any software, nobody uses it to the fullest, but Hindenburg is pretty cool. Um, I would definitely say that you have to commit to however long you're going to commit, say, I'm going to do a podcast a week for a year or for six months, or right. there's no, if I do a podcast this week, there can't be the, if there has to be, I'm doing one. Um, and, and if that means you interview your mother or your sister, or just come up with some content yourself, you have to do it because you just, if you don't do one this week, then you won't do one next week. And then pretty much your podcast is done. And, and I've heard some statistics on how many podcasts don't make it past, you know, 10 or 20 episodes. And it's a lot, a lot of them. So. A lot of them. And I totally agree. And, and I agree with you. So the, the amount of commit, commitment you need to have. And I think someone who just starts out, they have the motivation level, like let's say level 100. And then at that point, if they do just do one thing, record 10 or 15 episodes while they're up, the motivation level is up there. Mm -hmm. And then release it throughout the next few months. And then it's done. Then they're off the off to the races. As compared to every single week, hey man, I need to pass, I need to find somebody else. I need to find somebody else. I need to find somebody else. If you do that, then you're spending more time finding somebody and then less time recording right. it. Right, right. Uh, the other thing is, and I think expectations need to be tempered. So, you know, we all hear Joe Rogan, you know, whatever his new contract is and however many downloads. Let's be honest. Not that many people care, at least when you started, not that many people cared about what you had to say. Not that many people cared about what I have to say. So, you know, a few people listen, you know, I would email my entire client base in a, in a blast email. Hey, check out my new podcast. And I'm thinking, you know, I'm going to get a thousand down. How could everybody's going to stop what they're doing and listen to my podcast? You know, 90% of those emails don't get opened and a few of them click on it. So it takes a while to, it, to get traction and it just does. But, um, you know, I, I, I recycle podcasts and share them on Twitter. And you look back at an episode, it's like, wow, you know, three months ago I released this and nobody listened. And then eight people listened to it yesterday. And I don't know who those eight people are and how they found it, but that's eight people, you know? So, yeah, definitely. You know, it's those bench listener, I guess, I guess you could say rather than watcher. it. And the people, when they find out about you and then they listen to your podcast, they want to listen to everything you got there. I have done that multiple different times because when I was listening to the whole podcasting, I still do where I would just go for a long walk. I'm talking like eight to 12 miles, like two, three hours of walking, like whatever. And then I find somebody, I'm like, I'm going to listen to the whole episode mm -hmm. series that yep. they have a whole season, whatever they call it. So speaking of season and series, which format do you follow? Season being like you have one season and then you have 10 episodes and you release it and you take a break or series being you do it every single week or every other week or whatever the case might be. Yeah, so on the weekly wealth podcast, because that's fairly general, I have an episode coming out every week. You know, to be honest, I don't quite understand the series kind of concept when you're doing something like that. So I think we're just going to release, you know, new episode every week. So we'll get up. I, I don't know what episode we're up to 20 something, but, you know, at a point we'll be at episode 300. Um, and then on the on the financially covered podcast, there's a little bit more specialization there. So I haven't been as diligent because you need more special and i don't want to say diligent but we're, we're, we're looking at more specialized guests there so um not everybody has something to say that specifically would resonate with an insurance agency owner uh so a little harder to find guests there but um we're, we're definitely you know there's at least two episodes a month coming out 
Okay. And every episode, every podcast, every thing is, every show is different, obviously, depending on who is listening and things of that nature. Mm-hmm. I totally agree with that. So mm-hmm. when you create a podcast, if you do want to interview interview base, it becomes so much easier to create content because you're literally asking question and the person is answering it. And some people have this format, which I don't agree with it. I don't understand it. They have 15 question, boom, 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 boom. And they go through it. Every single episode is the same format. And I'm like, why are you doing it that way? You get nothing out of it. And then what do you recommend? The 15 question bullet point or like a conversation? Yeah. So what I normally do is with a guest, I will ask them to email me Two to two to four questions that can guide our conversation, okay. and they're normally, um, you know, and I'll give them an example like what are some of the biggest mistakes you see people make in your field? So the podcast normally starts out with, "Hey, this is David Chuddick, and welcome to the podcast." And uh, if you want to have a um, normal, just like to work with a financial advisor, I'll have my link in the show notes. And today we have. Uh, uh, Jim Smith on and Jim does this. And so, Hey Jim, tell us a little bit about yourself and about your, your personal life. So then, you know, they tell about their, how long they've been in business and a little bit about their family. Cause I want to build rapport. Cause I think that's part of podcasting is, uh, people need to like you. And then we'll have not 15 questions. We'll have two or three questions, uh, that they've given us. And then, you know, maybe we chit chat around that question for five or six or seven minutes each. And then, you know, we get to the closing and it's, you know, between 25 and 30, 35 minutes total is, is what is what our episodes end up being. Okay. Because some people I have, like when I first started out, I did the whole bullet point question, boom, 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 boom. And after the third episode, I got personally bored of them. Like, I already know. And then um, what I did was I got, I started like in the back of when the monitor was, um, when the video wasn't working or when I turned it off, I would start yawning because I'm like, I already know what I need to do. So right. having this common conversation, you are going to learn so much and then you'll be more engaged as compared to 15 bullet point questions. Yeah. So if somebody is just creating a content, like a solopreneur kind of thing, any advice you can give, like what kind of content should they create or how can they create it a content that the audience will love. So everybody cares about something and they're passionate about something. And there is a podcast about everything out there from politics to, to wrestling, to eighties new music and movies, to money, to how to make money, to how to be a minimalist. So what you're, what you're passionate about is what your podcast needs to be about. So I can take a money topic and I can babble about it for 30 minutes without really that many notes, just because it's something that I know and I believe in. Um, And, you know, there are other people that can talk about sports or or anything else. So it has to be something that you're passionate about, uh, first of all. And then second of all, I think, and, and I hate this, but I think it's a reality that you cannot intend to make money off of your podcast for a long time. I just don't think it's, it's, you're not going to make money off of it. You're going to hopefully build a following and hopefully that in my case, hopefully a certain percentage of that following will become a client, those that fit. And in my business, I don't need that many clients. If you're bigger clients to, to make a huge, huge difference, but, um, you know, there's no corporation that's going to pay me tens of thousands of dollars to talk about their product because, I don't have millions of listeners yet and, and I don't know that I ever will, you know, cause um, I, I, I'm not necessarily looking for that. I mean, I'm looking to, if I could add one really good client per month, that would make my podcast hugely, insanely successful. Okay. I mean, quality over quantity, I guess is the, always the key. If you have a quality of listeners, quantity, quality people who are listening to your show, that that definitely makes a huge difference. Well, and on the on the just the tip podcast that I actually listened to this morning, they talked about um, monetization, and how did he put it? He put there are two ways to make money off your podcast. One is your audience is the product, meaning that you build up a big enough audience, and then some company is talking to you. It's going to pay you to talk about a product. So. You know, I, I listen to the Jim Rome podcast. He talks about sports and he pitches all kinds of products and it might be like a razor. So go to this razor site slash Jim Rome and then that's how they're paying him a little piece. And that's great because he has a great following. Right. The other way to make a um, 
to make money off of your podcast is to have your podcast be the service. So again, in my, in my, case i'm looking to to get financial planning clients eventually from from my podcast so if you had a million dollars to invest or just you didn't know what to do with it hopefully you've been listening to my podcast you like me you feel like i'm trustworthy you feel like i'm competent and then you would email me we would do a zoom call and then we would provide a service to you and that's how i would get paid right Absolutely. You know, the, the, there are so many different uh, ways to monetize. One is obviously the sponsorship. Another one is the service space. And third one is the, the donation. If you like my podcast, here's a link in the show notes. Donate it to my cause and I will continue to produce this valuable content that you like, which is so many different ways to do it. And then digital products, so on and so forth. Mm -hmm. So what I want to ask you is like, how, is there a, well, let me put it this way. What ways have you found that has been working for you to get the word out there to, so people can listen to your podcast? Yeah, so that's the hard part because uh, so I have a book of business. So we do send emails out to hundreds of people. And um, I also in the podcast ask people to, you know, please like and subscribe. And if you know anybody, please tell them about the podcast. I do. Uh, share on Twitter. I share on on Facebook. Um, but yeah, I mean, I don't know. I mean, how do you have any other strategies? Because that would certainly be a great thing for me. And I know that you know, I you can pay services to, and maybe that would be a good thing to pay services to market it a little bit more. But you know, I don't know. Definitely, I think paid service. If you want to do it, do it in the way like if it was advertisement. Because when you go to the speaking from experience, if you go to the paid service part of it, they might just give you a listener who are based of another country right. that are never gonna use your company or your services whatsoever. To control more of it, go to Facebook and you could literally just use the Facebook advertisement where like, hey, I got this great content, you know opt it in and then you send them to the link so that way you could target your link uh your audience to the pacific like to your zip code if you want to yeah and, and i've then, done some some minor facebook um facebook ads and you know you can spend 20 bucks and get in front of at least a certain amount of people that fit what you're looking for so right and then you know that part works but another way is that you could do it obviously if you're doing a podcast whatever record it Put it on YouTube and then do the YouTube marketing that way. The title, the, the thumbnail, the keywords and all that stuff. Because you might record in January 1st. Come February 1st, you never even thought about it. All of a sudden, you're getting hits from YouTube, right. which is right. also a search engine, right? And then another way that I have found that has been working great for me is the instant Instagram hashtag marketing, quote unquote. So you, you take your regular picture or part of your uh video interview or your recording video part of it like a minute or two or whatever and then you put it on instagram and then you can use up to 30 28 to 30 different hashtags that will go into so for example in this case uh the simple podcast cloud uh, podcast we can say hey hashtag entrepreneur hashtag small business hashtag love podcasting things of nature so what that happens is when you do it throughout the day for example nine o'clock you use it post it and then some people will go to those particular hashtags only and look for it and then from there you can build a following that people will go check out your instagram profile and then go through it and they start following you and then when you put something in there and then from there you can direct them to your podcast email list whatever you think going on absolutely so hashtag marketing definitely works hey that'll that that's a good one and then the other thing is just bigger guests that have um you know followings if they you know if you cross promote i think that'll that'll kind of kind of get you there as well so but but you know you're not going to get to millions and i and i think that's one of the biggest thing to remember is um the numbers are not going to get there as quick as you want them to they're just not and that's okay that's I think that's the misperception of anything else. Like when somebody sees like, oh my God, this guy is so popular, he's so successful, I want to be just like them, that they don't understand the last 10 plus years of the hard work that he did. No one talks about that stuff. And then all of a sudden, after 10 years, he's overnight success. You know, Joe Rogan, for example. And then you're like, no, nah, everybody in their brother wants to become a podcaster. Right, right. <laughs> it, right. But some people are just doing it for the wrong reason because they just want to make their own, you know, uh, quick bucks and that's that. And then other people like you and me, we actually want to help people with our valuable information, the service and things of that nature. And then that's what it is. But also we are, patient we don't give up like after 
now five episodes. It's not working and that's that. I'm like, I'm in this for the long, long haul and I will do this for the next five, six plus year. That's just me because I love this. And I, the emails, the feedback that I get back from the people who listen to my show is like, wow, this is really cool. So I'm in for the long run. And then speaking of in it for the long run, what tips that you can give somebody who is starting out, they're not seeing results, what can you advise them to say, hey, continue on, the light is at the end of the tunnel? Well, and I think there are many, many resources out there. You can Google. A lot of times in life and in business, there's maybe one or two tweaks you can make. So, for instance, the the, the hashtag, I'm, I'm not really big on Instagram at all. I probably should be. I could probably spend 20 or 30 minutes a week just on what you just said. And, hey, if that gets some more downloads and, and helps with some more snowballing, then that's a great thing. So I think – as an entrepreneur, and podcasting is very entrepreneurial, you just always have to be looking for ways to improve because you don't drift to the to the top. And, and unless you're a famous person with a famous name, you know there are famous people that can start a podcast tomorrow and get hundreds of thousands of listens just because of their name. Well, you're not that person, and I'm not that person, unfortunately. So we have to kind of grind our way there, and then we have to figure out what's you know what's the goal. And I think there are people who have podcasts, and they, they don't want to make money. It's just a topic they like talking about, and that's hey, you know, if no, if almost nobody listens, but you're getting your word out to a few, that's great. And then you know, if you're looking to grow your brand, you just have to know like what is a reasonable rate that you can that you can expect, and it's not as big as you think it is, probably. Definitely not. You know, it's always say quality 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 and then you know if but for me personally i used to be when i first started out podcasting speaking of analytics and things in that nature hey i want to know how many listens how many downloads people are listening to it and things in that nature and then a few months into it, i'm like that particular number became less important as compared to the people who were actually emailing me or messaging me like i love this thing so what analytic do you follow that you like hey i'm hitting that number i'm good in that analytic part you know i mean I probably shouldn't look at the 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 total listens, but that's that's what I look at because I don't. Um, and I use Anchor as as the host, and and that's what you know. I, I mean, a lot of people say Anchor is a great start, and then maybe you move on from that when you get more advanced. I don't know enough to know if that's the right advice or not, but um, you know, you look at it and it tells you how many how many listens you have. But I do have, you know, there are people in countries I've never heard of, so those may be bots. They may not even be real people they may be just you know uh artificial intelligence so you know um but when when you do for me i'm not looking for millions of downloads i'm looking for you know hey that 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 person that i'm trying to convert to be a client so when they say yeah i heard that podcast that's pretty cool or when i email them the podcast um then that's really the thing for me um another thing that i'm doing that that that's uh, I'm in a small town and I'm about to start advertising on the radio once a day doing the stock report. So it's going to be, Hey, this is David Chuddick. Uh, you know, the Dow Jones is up by 20 points. S and P is down. And then we'll talk about one or two stocks that are local to the area. So like Duke energy is up. And then I'll have another 30 seconds where I'm going to say, and Oh, by the way, check out weekly wealth podcast.com and sign up for our newsletter. And we also, we're going to be coming out with like a five part mini video course. So that'll be a way if I literally got five people a month that were good people to get on my list, that's another great way to kind of get it out. So again, this is for someone not looking to have millions of listens. This is for someone who's looking to get, you know, one client a month or every two months that are good clients. Yeah, definitely. If you get those five people to listen to you and out of the five, you get one client who actually has a good financial uh, mm -hmm. stability, can spend money with you, then that's all that matter. That's like, that's all you really need, actually. Right, so right. all those millions of downloads, people listen to it like, okay, whatever. But people, at the end of the guess, if you look at your from point of view, your your business point of view, right? Hey, I'm investing X amount of dollars. What is the ROI? And so let's say if you're investing $200 with the hosting, with your equipment, your time, and uploading it, editing it, and things of that nature, let's say $200 per month. And then at the end of the month, you get... I don't know, 300 back, let's say 500 altogether, 200 gone, 300 back. I think that would be good ROI. Sure. So, so uh, 
Well, and in my business, you know, and we all have to know what our purpose is in my business. As long as you're a client, I'm getting revenue from you. So um, if you're a client for 10 years, I'm getting revenue every quarter for 10 years. So the, the lifetime value of a client is potentially huge. So that's why, again, I, I don't, you know, I don't, and I don't know that I'll ever do any, any sponsorships or anything. Cause for me, that might cloud the message a little bit. Um, you know, so my, I think, but I think everybody, you need to know the goal of your podcast. And for me, the, the goal is credibility. And ultimately if it helps a few people push them over the edge to become a client, then, then it's done what it's supposed to do. Yeah, I think the way I look at sponsorships are like advertisement when you are watching TV. Let's say you're watching your favorite TV and all of a sudden you were like, oh my God, this is so cool. Here comes a great part. And then, here comes a 30 second ad. Yep. <laughs> it's like, you're like, oh my God, I was so into it. I'm about to go. And then here goes the 30 second ad. So, you know, depending on how it's done, if you do it naturally, like for example, we're talking, we're talking and then I'll say, hey, by the way, uh, my name is Mark Kumar, lifestyle entrepreneur and I'm a proud founder of Simple Podcast Cloud that easy transition becomes a lot easier and then, you know, completely different way of just slapping it on like polished thing. And what I want to ask you is like, how, or rather, what advice would you give somebody who wants to create the intros and outros, intros being in the beginning of one, outros being the outro of it? What uh, resources can you share where people can go and create these outros and intros? Yeah, so I went on Fiverr. And um, I, I, I just put in podcast intro music and, you know, you get a hundred different, uh, different options. I spent 50 or $75 and um, I wanted a female voice just cause I wanted just kind of a contrast uh, uh, just, just to where it was almost like somebody's introducing me. So there was someone and I listened to a couple of her samples and then, uh, she, you know, you engage her services and then she sends you a link to, uh, her, her site where she's paid royalties and there's thousands and thousands of songs and you find the songs and, and then you, you send her what you want her to say. And she sends you, uh, you know, a 20 second recording. And then you say, well, can you make this word a little bit more emphasized or not? And, you know, in, in a day or two, so that, that was pretty simple and it, it didn't cost a whole lot of money. But I, re, you know, to me, I think the intro music needs to be strong or catchy or just get your attention in, in some in some way. So mine is electric guitars, and uh, it, it, I think I have cool intro music. So, <laughs> all right, cool. Speaking of intro music, where can people go check out your podcast? So the. Uh, weekly wealth podcast. We're on all the major platforms. We are on, uh, you know, Apple podcast, Spotify, but you can all just also just go to www.weeklywealthpodcast.com. We upload them all there and, uh, it's just a, just a pretty cool site. And it talks a little bit about, you know, me and my firm and everything else. All right, cool. So last question, probably not last question, but towards the end anyway. So if you were to give 25 ver 25 year old version of yourself a younger version advice wow all the knowledge that you know right now to get to where you are a lot faster what advice would that be i think the best advice is that everything you do takes you either towards or away from your goals so there is no such thing as an overnight success. When you see that athlete and you say, wow, this guy came out of nowhere and won. No, 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 no. That guy dedicated everything from childhood on and parents spent money on lessons and everything else. You just don't know about it. And um, so everything we do on a daily basis, we need to be focused on, on the goal. So Darren Hardy wrote the... Um, uh, the compound effect. And it basically said, everything you do is either working for you or against you. So if you want to lose weight, most of us know generally what to do. Right. And if you eat one triple cheeseburger, you're not going to gain 20 pounds. Right. Um, but if you do that four times a week over the course of the year, you will. And it's just that bad habit compounded. And it's the same thing in business or, or podcasting or anything else. Um, if you're, if you're spending 10, 20 minutes a day thinking who could be my next guest, or one thing I started doing is before I released my podcast, I'd listen to it in my car on the way home to see what it sounds like in a car. Cause most podcasts are listened to in a car. Right. And the last one, for example, there was a portion that I forgot to edit out. So there were 
there was one time where I said the same sentence twice in a row. So thankfully I didn't edit it. I didn't release it. So then I just had to edit it the next day, but it sounded pretty good. But there were a few times where I'm like, yeah, I can't release this episode. I need to redo it because, and I need to get some help with sound quality and everything. So, but I think those little things, you know, nobody becomes a champion from, they become a champion from what you see. So when Michael Jordan hits that big shot, you think, well, Michael Jordan, no, but you don't know what he did before that and how many thousands of hours, because everybody has talent, but it's the, it's those who work hard and smart to get the most of their talent are the ones who become, become the champions at business, at podcasting, at sports, at life. So that is a super solid advice. I think and if, if people listen to me, if they just got that advice alone they would go a lot further than you know anything else so uh part two of that question would be what is in store for you for the next two years that you are so passionate about working on so my next project is putting together a five-part uh, mini video series so uh if if you listen to the weekly wealth podcast and then the call to action is uh, we're, uh, please go to the Weekly Wealth Podcast and sign up for our five-part uh, mini video series where it's going to be um, the, the five biggest financial mistakes that you might be making now. So, you know, it'll all be automated and there's, you know, there's some obstacles with that just as far as getting it done. But if you got, uh, you know, a five to 10 minute video from me for five straight days that you felt are valuable, uh, that would certainly build kind of our relationship and make you more likely to engage me as your financial planner when, when, or if you have that need. So that's the next thing is building the list, um, you know, with good quality content. And then if I can, can, can just drip and stay in front of you, you know, you may not think you need a financial planner now, but you may inherit $10 million. You may win the lottery. You may not. So when the, so I want to say in front of you until the time comes and then you're like, yeah, there's only one option. And it's that guy that I listen to every week. So. Yeah, definitely. I think all of us can definitely use some kind of a financial help or financial advisor. And obviously, you can talk to David about it. And then, you know, check out his website, which is a weekly wealth podcast.com. Go check that out. And then also, uh, last question I want to ask you. I know we spent so much time on this amazing podcast. I know when people are going to listen, they're like, wow, this is so cool. Shares ton of ton of secrets and tips and things of that nature. So if you could share two tips or two advices, I guess you can call it. Uh, somebody who already started a podcast, they already did the basic stuff, whatever. And now they want to take it to the next level. What would that be? Or how can they do that? You, I think you either need to learn how to edit very well or pay someone to edit for you uh, because I, I do think that like I started cutting a snippet of of um, of the conversation and putting it before the intro music as a little preview and there's not like a tremendous amount of skill in that but at least in the beginning you don't know how to do that so I think b getting having the best quality editing that you can have whether it's you or paying someone I think is is very very important and then I think your equipment and your sound quality needs to be as good as it possibly can be and you don't need to necessarily even spend that much money because equipment is so good and so cheap but um, you know, you have to be in a room that's quiet. You have to maybe invest in some soundproofing, but you know, not not millions of dollars. But uh, you, you know, you can't have background noise, and and you know, if you need to get rid of your kids for a little while and not have them around, that's just what you have to do. So I think sound quality. It's kind of like when there when there's fingerprints on a, on a, on glass. Nobody really. You don't notice the clean glass, but you notice the glass with the fingerprints on it. So people don't notice perfect sound quality, but they notice when it's not perfect. So it kind of needs to be as close to perfect as you can get it. That is a one solid advice. David, thank you so much for taking the time from your busy schedule, for being here, talking to me, and also the Simple Podcast team. Truly appreciate that. You know, We wish you much, much success. And... Uh, Last thing I want to do with you is just give you the floor. You can share whatever you want with the audiences who will listen to it. So right now, the floor is all yours. 
Wow. So I have an open floor, say whatever I want. That's a, that's a little bit scary. So um, just like I said about, uh, about podcasting, everything you do is going to kind of take you towards or away from your goal. Well, the same thing is with money, same thing with relationships and all the things that are important to you. So money's a tool. Money's not good. Money's not bad. Money's just a tool. So if, if, if many of our daily decisions that are financial related are taking us are purposefully taking us towards our goal will make tremendous progress. What, uh, what Walt Disney's brother said was when your values are clear, your decisions are easy. So if you have, you know, a strong goal to get to a certain place financially, and there's a strong reason for that, then maybe you just naturally don't waste money and you naturally don't spend $9 on a value meal, or you naturally don't do these things because you have a big enough, big enough why. So look at your why and build your, build all of your decisions around that and, and we'll all move in the right direction. Awesome, man. Thank you so much.